In this video, we will look at the solution to our problem of finding the combinations of a given string. And the way we're going to do that is we will adopt a very similar approach to the one we adopted for the permutations of a string, if you remember from that video. And the way we're going to do it is we will look at a very simple example. And in this case, I'm going to use the same example I used for the permutations. I'm going to look at the string ABC. And then I will solve the problem for this given string, I will solve it manually. So I'll write down the solution right here manually using a process of my own. And then what I'm going to do is I will observe myself solving this problem and then I will study my solution and then I will reverse engineer a, a, an algorithm from my solution. So I'll observe my solution, look for certain patterns, and then I will reverse engineer an algorithm that would allow me to solve that problem for any given string and at all times. So I'll come up with a methodic process based on how I solve the problem or based on any patterns that I could observe. And uh, this way we'll come up with our, uh, our algorithm and then we will move from there to implementing it in code. So let's go ahead and solve that example right here manually. So how would I come up with all the combinations that this string could give us? Now a combination would basically be a selection or a grouping. So you could imagine that you had a bag and inside that bag you had the three elements A, B, C or the three characters A, B, and C. And then you wanted to find out what possible combinations or selections or groupings you could make out of these three elements. You could for example say I'm going to focus on A. All the groupings that I could uh, create using A as, as an element inside that grouping. So let me start by taking out A. This will be the first grouping that I could create. Taking out A this is one combination. Another combination would be to say I'm going to take out A and also take out B with it. So I take these two out together out of the bag and I create the combination AB. This is another possibility. What I could also say is I can say I will take ABC. So I'll take all three together and create a combination. Another possibility. And uh, sticking to A again I could say I will oops we got rid of B here. So I can say I, I will take A and C together and create a combination. And these are all in fact the combinations that we could create with A as an element within them. Now let's move on to B. B alone would be one possible combination. So taking out B from that bag would be one possible combination. What other combinations could we form with B? I could take B and A like I did for A. For A what I did was uh, I combined A with every single other element. I combined it with B, I combined it with C, and then I combined it with BC together. And then I covered all the possibilities for A. Now let's do the same thing for B. I could take B and A. But B and A is the same thing as A and B, right? Remember I said that in the statement of the problem? I said this is a combination and it does not matter the order in which you take them out. You could take out B, then A, or take out A and B. As long as you have A, B in your hand, this means it's the same combination. So B and A has already been covered. What about B and C? B and C hasn't been covered here. So B and C is also a possible combination. And what about B, C, and A? B, C, and A has already been covered here. A, B, C is the same thing. So here we've covered B and C, uh, B, in, as part of our combination. And finally, let's look at combinations that would always involve C. So one of them would be just taking C alone. So I would take out C, and that would be one combination. What other combinations could we have? We could have C and A but C and A has already been covered here. We could have C and B. C and B has already been covered here. We could have C, B, and A, but C, B, and A has already been covered here. So this is the only combination that we could form in the end using C as an element. So we notice here how we've covered all the possible combinations for this given string. Now, now that we've solved the problem, and I did it in a somewhat methodic manner, let me try to come up with an algorithm or a step uh, a bunch of steps that would allow me to solve that same problem over and over again and for any given string. What I can do is just take the way I solve this problem and come up with an algorithm to, uh, for it and, and then just code it up. This would be my solution. So looking at each every single character and trying to form combinations with uh, all the other characters. This is one possible way of doing it. It's a little bit complicated but uh, it's, it's possible. What I'm going to do instead is try to observe my solution. And from the information that I'll be getting from my observations, I will try to come up with something smarter, something simpler that I could code up very quickly. So let me make some observations here.
what you notice first is that in the first position here, in all of our combinations, we have A, B, and C appearing, right? In your second position, you only have B and C appearing. See, B, B, C, C. There are no A's appearing. So I'm just making some observations here, and you'll see how this will lead us to a very simple solution. And in the third position, you only have C coming up. This is one observation that I make. Another more important observation that I'll be making is the following. After, and it also builds on this observation, actually. After every A, I could have B, I could have nothing, so no characters. I could have a B, or I could have a C. After a B character, I can never have an A. Do you see a B character followed by an A? So I have B here, A can never come after it. I have a B here, A could never come after it. I have a B here, there's no A after it. The only character that could follow a B is a C. And similarly for C, the only character that could follow a C is nothing. And this, in fact, is a reflection of the characters and their ordering in the original string. So if you look at A, B, C, A could be followed by any of the, in the combinations. A could be followed by any of the, uh, the characters that actually follow it in the original string. So after A, we could have B or C. After B, we could only have C. Or nothing. But we can never add B, A because A comes before it. And after C, well, there's no character after it. So C, whenever it comes up, it's a terminating character in the combination. There's nothing after it. This observation will form the basis to a recursive solution that we will be implementing. And here is how it goes. So here's what I'm going to do. I will set a, a group of allowable characters for every position in the combination. So for my first position in the combination, which is this right here, this is the first position. The allowable characters are A, B, and C. Why? Because there are no characters that precede the first position. So everything is allowed. A, B, and C is allowed. And then I will perform that same process over and over again, giving rise to a recursive solution. So suppose A was placed in the first position. What are the allowable characters in the second position? The allowable characters in the second position, assuming A was placed in the first position, are B and C. Why? Because they are the only characters that follow A. So the allowable characters after A are B and C. Now what about this B right here? This B can be followed in the second position by only C, right? It can only be followed by C or nothing. So I'm just going to put C here. What about this C? In the second position, if C was placed in the first position, and this only arises in this particular combination, there could be nothing. It's the empty set. We cannot place, there are no allowable characters after C. Why? Because we have no characters that follow it in the actual string. And then I'm going to do this recursively. Let's take this B right here. What could it be followed by? B could be followed by, like I said, C. So in the third position, this B could be followed by a C. Uh, for this C right here, assuming we had an A in the first position, a C in the second position, what is it, what can it be followed by? See, I'm applying this process recursively, and this will translate into a recursive code. So this C could be followed by nothing, an empty set. So we could have A, B, C, A, C, nothing. Uh, what about B? B, we said it could be followed by C, and this C could be followed by nothing, empty set. This empty set, well, this is the ending of a string of the combination. Now we only have this C right here. This C, well, it cannot be followed by anything because this is the final uh, character in the string because we've reached, in fact, the third position in our combination. And this recursive process where I, re I iterate over allowable characters, I have a set of allowable characters and I ask myself the same question. What could I place after it? And I will do so. So for A, I could have A alone. This was my first position right here, A alone. Or I could have A followed by B. And this is also the same case, A followed by B, and it's covered in this particular case right here, following all these, these two paths. Or I could say A followed by C, and this is right here. Similarly for B, I ask the same question. First I could put B alone in the first position, 
So I'm iterating over these allowable characters. And then I could also follow B by a C. This covers this combination. And after a C, we could not have anything. And that's it. What about the C itself? C itself cannot be followed by any character, so it's the empty set. And this gives rise to I, my recursive solution, which I put in an algorithm form right here. So in a recursive solution, we have a base case and a recursive case. Let's look at the recursive case here. In the recursive case, what I'm saying is that for each character in the, in the set of allowed characters, so we'll have to determine the set of allowed characters based on our position and what characters have come before us. If it's the first position, then there are no characters that came before us, so the allowed characters are all the characters in the string, like I showed above. So the first thing I do is I add the character to the buffer, to a buffer that will basically constitute my output that I print out. I will print out the buffer. So let me go over this with my example of ABC. So suppose we had ABC as my string. For each character in allowed characters, these, these are all the allowed characters, I will add the first one, this first each character, to the buffer. So I'll add it. I'll print it out. This gives me my first combination. And then I will call this combination method once more, given the buffer which has A, and over the next allowed character. The next allowed characters are the ones that could follow an A, which are B and C. So for my next iteration, my allowed characters will be B and C. So I'll come back here. I'll go to the else case, because I still have allowed characters. In the base case, this, is o this only arises when uh, you don't have any allowed characters left. And this is the case when we have a C in a buffer. And we'll see how this arises. So A, and then I say for each character in the allowed characters, and in my second call to this function, the allowed characters I said were B and C. Remember that. So I'm going to add the first one of them to my buffer. So I added, my buffer had an A already. I added B. I print it out. This is a combination. And then I call it once more using this, this as the buffer and over the next allowed characters. What are the next allowed characters given A and B? Well, the only character that could follow this is C. C could follow it because C comes after the B. So I'll, I'll call that method once more. See, see how recursion works out? But this time with a C in my allowed characters. And for each character in allowed characters, which is only C itself, I will add it to the buffer. I already had A and B. I add C. I print it out. So this is my third combination that I just printed out. And then I will call combine over the next allowed characters. But now I have C. C is the, we said, terminating character. It cannot be followed by anything else. There are no allowed characters after it. So I'm going to send it an empty set. When I go here, the empty set will come and then we'll evaluate to no allowed characters. So I return and I will come back to my state where I was right here before I made this call. What I'm going to do is I will remove the uh, that character that I just recently added, which was a C from the buffer. So remember here, we added C, we printed it out, and then we made this call. While we came back from this call, we, we just we had just added the C. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will remove it from the buffer, and this is from, not form. I will remove C from the buffer, so I'll be left with A, B, right? And I will go over, I will come right here and I'll say for each character in allowed characters. Remember, there was only C in the allowed characters, so this will exit. This will exit this execution. Try to work this out in your mind. Now we're, we're dealing with multiple recursive states, so you might get lost somewhere, but if you write it down with a, a good tree, you will not lose yourself. And what, what I, the state I'll be coming back to will be right here, where I added a B and I made a call. And so I will remove B this time from my buffer. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do to the next I'm going to go to the next character in allowed characters. And we were at this state where we finished with B. I'm going to add C here. I'm going to add it to the buffer, print it out. So this gives me my fourth. And then I'll combine. Since it's a C, combine will hit the base case and return. And we're done with this. And in fact, we're done with A. It's going to work its way all the way up to A. And then we're done with A. And then we're going to, we're going to go to the next allowed character in our very, very first call. Remember, our very first call was A, B, C in the allowed characters. So we finished with A. Now we move with B. Same process goes on and on. What could follow B is a C and so on and so forth. And then what we are going to end up with is what we have right here. 
we will code this solution in our next video.